Hello and welcome everybody. This will be a very simple tutorial dealing with the new ducking function in DaVinci Resolve 15, more specifically the version 15.1. You need to have this one for it to work. This is quite new as of September 2018. For those who are not familiar with ducking, that is the concept when a signal, for example voice, controls another signal, for example music. Think of well, people on YouTube talking over music and the music coming back and forth, getting louder and quieter when somebody speaks. Just like I'm doing now. So this is a very handy function. Um, it saves a lot of time. It should have been in the software since a long time. Blackmagic took a long time to implement it, but now it's here. We're all happy. Let's see how it works. So I've already created a timeline here and put some footage in there. Let's add some music first. This is Bleeps by David Cutter. Really good stuff. Check out his link in the description below. And let's add a voice. Actually, let's put it here and I'll just make a cut here so we have more to work on later. Right, so if you listen to that now, you notice that you can't really hear the voice because the music is loud and stays loud. And probably you also have saturation of the main channel. So what you want to do is to get the music quieter so that we really can hear the voice. So this is now really simple. We just go to the Fairlight audio page. The voice channel is already nice and big. So what you want to do is to go to the voice channel in the mixer here and double click on the dynamics uh, section. In the dynamics section, all you need to do is to locate the compressor and click on send. That means that the voice will be sent into the sidechain, which is, imagine that like an internal cloud of DaVinci Resolve. It's just lingering out there waiting for something to happen. That's all you need to do for here. Then you go to the channel that you want to control. That is the music channel. Here it is channel one. Double click on dynamics and here you need to click on listen. You activate the compressor because the compressor needs to do the work. And what happens now is that the voice channel sends a signal the compressor listens to the signal and uses that signal to do some work on the music channel instead of listening to the music to do the work on the music channel. Now we have some settings here. Threshold ratio, attack, hold and release. Those are pretty standard and basic settings for a compressor. What a compressor does is listening to the input that is usually the signal itself from the channel or something else like we have now. And then we decide on the threshold. So that is the volume at which the compressor starts working. And then a ratio that is how much it will attenuate the sound. And then a take hold and release um, essentially uh, determine how fast this all happens. Right, let's just start with a random th threshold that's already here, minus 50 in decibel. That means that when the signal is higher than minus 15 decibels, the compressor will start working. Let's select quite a high ratio for now so that we can clearly listen what's happening. And yeah, let's just check. Something happens, but not much. You can see it by the gain reduction. We can listen to the music alone to understand what's happening. So, you could hear that the music comes and goes really fast, it gets louder and quieter, and it's essentially a mess. We don't want that. So, there's two solutions. The first one is to lower the threshold. So we go to minus, let's say 25-ish, that means that it will act a bit more aggressively and, well, almost um, any volume will trigger the compressor. Let's have a listen. 
Paide Kultuuri keskuses täna kella üheri. Okay, that's better. Let's listen just to the music. So it is pumping, um, going up and down really fast, but in general it stays low. So that's good. Let's just lower the threshold more and see what happens. Let's go to minus 35 and listen, well, just to the music. Okay, it's still jumping, but in general the music is just almost gone and that's what we want. Let's listen to it together. Perfect, that's quite good. Now, you might say or think that the music is a bit too quiet. So we put it back to, let's say, 25. Just as a reminder, let's listen to it again. That's all right, but the music is pumping. Now we need to work with the attack, hold and release buttons. Attack determines how fast the compressor starts working. You want that to be relatively fast because as soon as there's voice, you want the music to be gone. So a setting between one and 10 milliseconds is probably all right. Let's leave it at 3.6. Hold determines how long the compressor stays active after the triggering signal, the voice here, is gone. And release is almost the same, except that in the period of time that is set, the volume of the music will slowly go back to normal. So let's put the hold to, I don't know, half a second and the release really fast so that we understand what's going on. Let's go to the end of the audio clip. Let's just set the time to one and a half seconds and push that out of the way. Let's listen again. So you could hear that nothing happens for about one and a half seconds and then all of a sudden there's a release of the music. That is really fast. We don't want that. So let's dial the hold down again to maybe a hundred and then let's see what happens with a two second release. So now you could hear that over a period of about two seconds, the music slowly comes back. That is too slow. It is soft, but it's too slow. So in that situation, let's uh, let's put both to 100 milliseconds. Let's have a listen. Okay, not too bad. Now, let's listen just to the music and see if this pumping business is gone. Yeah, it's almost gone. It jumps a little bit. That's okay because there's still the voice and so on and it will probably go unnoticed. Yeah, all fine. Well, that's almost it. Let's see what happens if we encounter a lower signal like that. Let's have a listen. Okay, now we have the pumping again. Let's just assume that we want uh, such a low volume for some reason. We're here to understand how it works, right? The volume of the voice is quite low, so that means that we need to work with the threshold and lower that down quite a bit. Let's go to 40 and see what happens. So far so good. Okay, as you can see in the waveform, there's a lot of gaps. So we need to increase the hold time and the release, possibly, and see if that helps. Yep, that gets mostly rid of the problem, depending on the speech pattern, the speed, the volume of the music, the style of the music, the style of the voice and so on, you need to play around with the release and the hold. If I go to extremes like that, it will work, but it might not work in other sections. Alright, that's already it. Now you know how to do it. Let's just recap. 
you go to your voice channel, you activate the sidechain with the button send, you go to your music uh, channel, you activate the listening by clicking on listen, you activate your compressor, you play around with the settings, and that's it. All right, I hope you like that. If you like that, please click on like, that's a good feedback for me. If you want to see more of that stuff, click on subscribe. There's more to come, tutorials, drone footage, all sorts of photo and video stuff. And if you have questions, please ask them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. I am Yannick, and all that's left to do now is to wish you a very pleasant day or night and enjoy creating stuff. See ya!